Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another falconry video. This video I wanted to show uh, and kind of explain how to trap a small falcon called an American Kestrel. Um, I've kind of done some videos on this in the past, but went uh, trapping with some other falconers the other day and got a little bit of footage of it and thought I would share. Now, uh, falconry in the olden days, especially anciently, trapping a bird was how it was acquired. Uh, some countries you can do that, some countries you cannot. So don't do any of this unless you know the laws of your land. In my area, if you're a licensed falconer and you have a trapping permit as well, this is legal and is done properly to make sure that the bird is safe and happy and healthy and whole. Now, uh, one of the rules we have, this is a law in the United States, and it's kind of just good practice, even if it's not a law in your country, is a bird acquired is always a first year bird. This is called a passage bird, a young bird. The reason is most birds of prey, most raptors, once they're a year old, will find, or older, they will find a mate. And most raptors mate for life. And you don't want to be taking away somebody's mate. Uh, first year birds are also easier to train. Their mindset is just very cut and dry. It's like, okay, well, I've hatched. I was raised by my parents. My parents ditched me out. This falconer got me. They're feeding me and taking care of me. And they're still letting me go out and fly totally free and hunt. Okay, this is just natural progression. Works very, very cut and dry. It's a good system that has worked well for thousands of years. So uh, the trap that we're using is called a ball chaptry trap. And I've shown these before. There's all different shapes and sizes. You can even read my book, Trapping Essential Essentials. You can buy it online if you want to see some of the different shapes that work. But in essence, you have a cage made out of some sort of wire, chicken wire, hardware cloth, whatever. Uh, I like to paint them black usually, but you don't have to. And there are nooses made out of fishing line on the outside. And on the inside, you put in a rodent. Uh, a mouse, a rat, something like that, um, and the and you put it out, and the falcon comes down, tries to get in, gets their toe caught, and you go out and grab them. So we're going to take a look at this. So driving around, we found a kestrel, uh, found lots of kestrels, which is good. The numbers seem to be going higher and higher, which is great. And uh, then we put it out in a field, and we actually kind of drove out a little into this field and put it out, and it came down immediately before we could back away. And so we had to sort of wait and watch. And once it went, it, it made a pass, went back up, and then we backed away and waited. And once she was on it and we saw she was caught, we drove back out and went out and, and carefully removed her from the trap and took the nooses off of her toes. Now, uh, that being said, when you have a bird in hand, the right thing to do is to kind of look them over, make sure they're healthy, double check the age, make sure they're their first year bird. Uh, take a look at the feet. A lot of times uh, the toes get bit by rodents that they are catching and could be infected. And maybe you don't want a bird that has a nasty infection or maybe even want to apply some topical uh, antibiotic and then re-release them back into the wild. Take a look at their feather quality, look at their tail, look at their beak, um, and then decide whether you're taking them home or whether you're going to set them free. Uh, this can be vital. We even found one one time where the toe, one of the talons, had just this weird black goop all over it, and it, we got some uh, some goo gone and got it off. It turns out what we think is that it probably found a mouse caught in a glue trap, got down on the mouse and got some of the glue on it and it just globbed all over. We got that off and uh, saved that. That would have been a, a big hindrance to that bird hunting. But so it's always good to do that. This bird ultimately we decided was not the bird for us and we, we set her free and she flew right back up and, and went up to the pole or to the phone line she had been on before and went back on with her day. But uh, trapping like this, it's um, it either works really fast and really easily or you're pulling your hair out. So if you're a falconer trying to trap a kestrel and you're not having any luck, be patient. Uh, we had tried some kestrels earlier in the day that wouldn't come down at all or would just come and hover over it and fly off and wouldn't give us the time of day. So it's totally normal. Depending on each bird, whether it's a spooky bird, whether it's very hungry, all of these are factors that play into it. The angle of your trap and and, uh, and and how natural the bait looks. These are all factors. But I thought you might just enjoy seeing this. Sorry, I got my macaw squawking in the background. Uh, thought you might enjoy this. Um, I don't know if people enjoy these kind of videos or not, but I thought I'd share it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments down below. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe. And as always, happy hawking.